This is Eric with Kalo Services and HVAC School, and today we're getting into this mess. So what have we got here? We've got to polish this turd. This motor burned out and was replaced and everything seemed okay to who was out here and it burned out again. So we're gonna investigate why. Now, as you can see with this equipment, there's a lot of less than ideal stuff going on here that we're gonna correct Having a contactor in the direct supply airstream, probably not a good idea. So what we have here is a, I believe this is a Magic Air ducted outdoor cabinet air handler that is piped over to that condensing unit over there. It's about a 10 ton, if I remember correctly. And we are gonna get started going through this. We're gonna replace the motor we're gonna put a control box here with a motor starter, downsize this breaker, which was a 60, which was tripped amazingly. So that must've been quite the burnout and tighten up any other installation or I shouldn't say installation, just any other issues we can with this unit within reason. I mean, it's still a turd, but it'll be a polished turd. So I checked into the wiring and it was correct. But as you can see here, the keyway isn't in there. That's a problem. This thing spun. And I'm gonna try to move the phone slow. We're right up against the motor and I can't spin this. Now it could be that it's just so damaged internally that it won't spin, but I can't get it to budge. So I know this pulley is not in great shape. We'll address that later if needed. But let me see if I can get it loose and get it off of this motor shaft, see what the heck's going on. But all that wiring, I'm sorry, I moved the phone so fast and people complain about it in comments and I get it, but I'm not a cameraman, sorry. So the contactor's gone, the motor is unmounted, the breaker is gone, all that wiring's gone. And we're gonna rewire all of that. We're gonna put the low voltage in a sealed junction box in the bottom here and plug the ends so that it's not getting all wrecked by the supply air. So this is one of the pullers I use for this type of job. Sometimes a three jaw will work better, which probably would in this application too, but the biggest one I have is what I need to use and I only have a two jaw for that. This thing's fighting me the whole way off. It still won't, I mean, now the pulley spinning on the shaft but it still wouldn't spin I can't spin that motor shaft at all so it's about off of there gonna look into the electric next once I get this apart start laying that out oh look at that spider that's a yummy spider huh black widow nice literally everything was living in this panel we had wasp nests we had mud daubers and we got a black widow spider cool is that the male I don't know I'm not a entomologist or whatever that is. Probably saying the total wrong word. So this is the contactor disassembled. Seen worse, but doesn't look too great. But also, you know, this motor did melt while that was engaged, so that didn't help anything. And it tripped a 60 amp breaker on a motor that's rated for like nine amps, plus the service factor. So here's the point we're at. The motor is roughly set and it's wired for the 208, 230 volt, which means four, five, and six are wire netted to each other. Seven and one go to black, eight and two go to red, and nine and two, or nine and three go to blue. So that's all joined up there for the motor high voltage wise. And that's going into the bottom of the motor starter. I have the loops so you can easily grab amperage at the bottom there. It's fed from the top of the motor starter, which is going down to our new 20 amp breaker. All the wire is sized for that. It's all number 12 wire. The motor starter has a high voltage coil. So 
this relay is to pull in the motor starter. So we have neutral run to one side of the motor starter coil, and then we have hot run to the relay, the cooling relay, which runs through the overload relay on the motor starter, and then back up and into A1 on the contactor to pull it in. So if this overload relay changes state, the motor stops. What we also have is on the contactor normally open, is we have yellow for the compressor. So if this contactor is not pulled in, the compressor will not run. And that is joined up with our low voltage here that we're gonna have in this junction box with a whip going back up there. And I'm gonna seal this hole with silicone and put the wires back together. Now, as far as I know, this is single stage, but interestingly, white was hooked up from the condenser to the thermostat. See, one of these wires comes from the condenser where the transformer is located, and one of these wires goes to the thermostat. So we have our float switch tied in, breaking red, that's how it was before. And we have our green going to our 600 volt rated wire into our motor starter enclosure. Same deal with our yellows and our blue, which is common. Everything's labeled there, and I have it labeled that that's low voltage coming in. And that's about it for the controls. The motor needs to be slid into position, and the belt and pull, well, the pulley needs to go back on, and then the belt, and we're just about ready for startup. Now, the spider that's in there, unfortunately, is gonna be sealed in there, because I'm not gonna be trying to smash a spider in a electrical panel and clean it out. I don't wanna mess around with touching that spider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seal the openings with silicone from the inside, put the panel cover back on, and that's gonna be that. And we'll seal up this top here. We'll seal up going into the unit that will be dealt with. That's pretty much it besides testing operation, of course, which will come once we get it started and making sure our amperage is good once this thing's running. So I'm gonna work on all that next and we'll take a look at that when it's done. All right, so I checked rotation on this. I had to end up getting a replacement pulley and belt. That other pulley wouldn't go back on. It was pretty trashed from spinning on the shaft. So I got a new pulley. I got a slightly different size one because the other belt was not the other pulley, the whole thing wasn't being used, so I measured where the belt landed in the old pulley and got one based on that, and we'll get it adjusted where it needs to be based on amperage and estimated unit airflow, which we will use measure quick to find. So I already bumped this and made sure it's spinning the right way. One thing I gotta do though, shut this blower, is I need to check amperage. So, the full load amps is 9.4 at 230 and 9.7 at 208. So let's measure our incoming voltage to see if it's 208 or 230. It is in fact 205. So we will set this accordingly. This dial here, I'm gonna change. Right now we're set for seven amps. I'm gonna set it for nine amps. I think that should be fine. So we have the blower running right now. I had to put a different pulley on it because the one I had would not go back on. I guess it got damaged on the old shaft and it just would not go. So we're drawing 7.8, 8.4, 9.7, and 8.4 so we're pretty high on our blower amps at 208 we can do 9.7 so i have the motor starter set for nine right now now i was looking at the wiring and the white wire is actually what's giving our cooling signal back at the condenser over here this thing is uh not much better than the other unit but I'm gonna have to make a slight wiring swap. As you can see, white is tied in to our cooling coming back. 
into all this mess here and this is a single stage unit so I'm gonna have to switch it in the junction box inside the unit and and use uh, the yellows not being used so I will just break white which is cool on this unit which is compressor I should say and it is a straight cool it's 88 degrees in the store gonna get some readings on this unit make sure it's running right the blower seems to be going about as fast as it can be that's our control box which we were shown before I siliconed all the openings in there except for a couple small openings down low in case water gets in there I want it to come back out although it'll come out the front anyway but all the holes I sealed up just kind of the concentric rings have those little gaps if you're familiar with those and those are not sealed I sealed the conduit coming out the top I know it's not ideal to come out the top there but I really didn't have room to do much else I could have came out the side with liquitite but I decided against it that's pretty much it gonna bend this cover it's a little bent up gonna get my hand seamers and bend it back I'll probably draw a schematic in here for the control panel switch that yellow make sure that everything works correctly but it's 88 degrees in the store so I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes and clean up some stuff and just kind of let it do its thing for a while or so that I can get some real readings off of it. Since this motor starter has a range that goes lower than our motor's drawing, let's give it a test, shall we? Try not to get struck by lightning here, because of course a thunderstorm just rolled in. So we're tripped. I don't hear my condenser running. So that's good. That means that Sorry for the quick phone movements. I'm doing this one-handed. So if you look at my contactor, my AUGS terminal, that's disabling my condenser. And let me reset this guy up to nine and a half. And there we go. rated for 9.7 with this motor so we're gonna go to 9.5 so that's the resolution I can see and that's what we need or at 8.6 so we should be fine there and that's about it for this call I just got to button this thing up and I'm good to go and for those who want to see not my best schematic I've ever done but it's something right so it's not that complicated of an arrangement here, just a relay to pull in a motor starter. So hopefully people understand what's going on. And on a commercial unit like this, it's not uncommon to use a relay to pull in a motor starter like this or big contactors because going through a regular thermostat and trying to pull in one here and one in the condensing unit plus all the other controls can overload the little relays on the thermostat so this will be much easier for it to cycle on and off than just directly cycling a contactor thanks for watching our video if you enjoyed it and got something out of it if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out hvac school is far more than a youtube channel you can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.